What's happening, my curious bunch of health fanatics? Our DNA's double helix strand that contains all our genes is wrapped tightly around 46 chromosomes. The ends of those chromosomes are known as telomeres. Imagine the flugel binder on the end of a shoelace. The telomeres are similar to those. Every time our cells divide, our telomeres get a little shorter. The shorter they are, the older our cells function until the telomeres become so short that the cells can no longer divide. This is known as the Hayflick limit, named after Leonard Hayflick, who discovered the divisional limits of cells. Once our cells reach their divisional limits, or the Hayflick limit, they either die or enter into a state of senescence, which is a zombie-like state, if you will. And I will link to another video at the end of this one about senescent cells. But telomere attrition, which simply means the shortening of telomeres, is one of the causes of aging. And when cells can no longer divide, the proteins they manufacture to rejuvenate tissue also declines. And it is one of the reasons, but not the only reason, why older people reaching old age seem to lose muscle mass, bone, strength, good skin, etc. As an example, we lose about 30,000 to 40,000 skin cells every minute. It is almost like the telomeres are an instruction book for a cell on how to function. So how do we keep our telomeres younger? Is there a way to make them longer to induce a youthful cellular state? You bet there is, and it is an enzyme called telomerase that instructs our telomeres to grow. An enzyme is simply a protein that acts as a catalyst to induce or speed up a biochemical reaction inside a cell. Regenerative cells in particular have high levels of telomerase to ensure the human body can continue to repair and replenish. On that note, telomerase could be considered an anti-aging enzyme. The function of telomeres and telomerase in aging were discovered in the 1980s and 1990s by the scientists Elizabeth Blackburn, Jack Sostak, and Carol Greider, who mutually shared in the 2000 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for the discovery of how chromosomes are protected by telomeres and the enzyme telomerase. Now, a study by Willett et al. took white blood cells from 787 candidates and followed them for 10 years. The study showed that telomere lengths and cancer rates were inversely proportional. The longer the telomeres, the less cancer. And the same was true for shorter telomeres, the more cancer. But do not go out and buy telomerase just yet. For cancer cells to be immortal, which they are, they rely on telomerase in order to keep dividing, and low levels of telomerase can be just as bad for the healthy cells that fight cancer. It is almost like we need a perfect level for anti-aging. Not too much, but not too little. Environment can also be a factor in telomere length, and it starts from childhood. Young people that experience a lot of stress and injury in early life have cells that have divided much more by adulthood, shortening their telomeres, making them more susceptible to disease. So remember, try not to cause children unnecessary stress if you want them to live a long and healthy life, because by most part, children are mostly a product of the environment they were subjected to. Unfortunately, I have seen no rigorous scientific evidence that you can supplement with telomerase and get longer telomeres. This is because the telomerase enzyme would most likely struggle to remain intact through the stomach acids, the small intestine, or from the microbiome. The best way known to upregulate telomerase is with exercise, and I'll link to a video on super fast ways to upregulate telomerase with the afterburn effect and high intensity interval training at the end of this video. Cancer cells have an infinite supply of telomerase, and that is why they can divide indefinitely and never reach their hay flick limit. But telomerase has never been shown to cause cancer. What we know is that when telomeres are shorter, more genomic instability happens, leading to mutations which go on to cause cancer. And this is consistent and corroborates the findings that less active people have more cancer. So currently, I cannot give you a finding that ingesting telomerase can lengthen your telomeres. And there are many other reasons why I think this approach wouldn't work. But I am personally working on a technology which can bypass the stomach and induce telomerase production inside the nucleus where the telomeres reside, which in turn can hopefully induce 
longer telomeres. So keep a close eye on my future research as it gets published. If you aren't already, consider becoming a patron of this channel. All funds raised go to furthering our knowledge with more research so that together both you and I can find solutions to age-related conditions. Aging is the number one cause of suffering, disease and death, but aging gets less than 1% of government funding for health research, even though it is the biggest cause of disease. Governments are locked into a mindset where they allow people to grow old and develop age-related diseases, then they simply try and mitigate those symptoms of those diseases with various medications, such as anti-inflammatories, anti-arthritic drugs, or some other type of therapy. This is called reverse engineering and is utterly frustrating for those of us in aging research. My approach is to keep biological tissues such as kidney, heart, liver, brain, muscles, bone and skin, etc. youthful so that the tissues do not develop disease in the first place. Sounds obvious where government funding should go, right? But for some reason, politicians steer clear of driving funds for research which can slow or reverse aspects of ageing. Well, why do you think that is? Is it possible there is more money in keeping people sick or less money in keeping people healthy? Who could possibly gain from people getting sick? I'll let you decide what those reasons are and feel free to put your thoughts in the comments below. I would really love to hear what you think about this situation. One of my mRNA therapies that will undergo human trials in the coming years, hopefully next year, depending on the FDA, aims to restore youthful function to aged tissues. We already know how to do this. It is just a matter of time for me to raise the funds and conduct the trials. Once we can repair tissues faster than aging can damage the tissues, we would have reached a point called biological escape velocity. So please support us if you can, and I'll leave a link to Patreon below if you want to support our research and see things happen sooner. Remember, Always chat with your doctor about any health advice you find online and visit me at www.scienceofaging.life. Smash that thumbs up button, fist bump the subscribe button, or face the consequences of your actions. As always, stay young and stay vibrant.